National Championship Basketball, the Syracuse Nationals versus the Fort Wayne Pistons in the NBA's final playoff at Syracuse. Baseball brings out the All-American Girl Baseball League for spring training at Alexandria, Virginia. Two teams are working out, the Fort Wayne Daisies and the Racine Bell. Hurts into the slot, he scores! Kelly Hurd just walked right on in, and Pete Robles top shelf, and it's 1-0 Comets list. Ray has to and still beat the shot! Go! Beasley! Lloyd Ball, a very rare hitting attempt off the right side. 14 years as a member of the U.S. national team, starting in his fourth straight Olympic. I love Fort Wayne. It's a great place to grow up. We have such a tremendous history of individual and team and international and national accomplishments and exciting individuals who've come to Fort Wayne to perform. Fort Wayne really does have a great sports history and I'm not just saying that or, or being biased because I've grown up here and because I play uh, for one of those teams professionally. Growing up my dad having taught me some of the history and also living through that and experiencing that as a young kid I'll always remember uh, the great things that have happened in Fort Wayne they will always stick with me and it's something to be proud of as a citizen of Fort Wayne. There's so many things. It depends on what your favorite sport is. And we can probably point to one or two things that were that Fort Wayne affected on a national scale. No. <laughs> I don't know. Not at all. Wow. The Comets winning 12 playoff games in a row was amazing. The birthplace of the NBA was incredible. Lloyd Ball playing in four Olympics and winning a gold medal. Demarcus Beasley playing in four World Cups now. No, I can't. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Uh, no, I cannot. The start of the LPGA tournament here. There was the Fort Wayne Open. There were the Pistons playing here. There were the Daisies playing here. The National Bowling Tournament, the Coliseum for a whole summer. Everett Scott, who everybody forgets, playing in more than a thousand Major League Baseball games in a row before Lou Gehrig ever started his streak. Bill Wamsgans having an unassisted triple play in the World Series. Johnny Bright leading the nation in total offense three years in a row. Fort Wayne Pistons. Basketball. What about them? Oh, they were very good and then moved to Detroit. They... That's about my dad's era. Anything else? Come on. Not really. Ball game here. <laughs> you know, you can go all the way back to the 1800s. The first professional baseball game was played in Fort Wayne. The first lighted baseball game was here. Alex Rodriguez had his first professional home run in Fort Wayne. You look at the Tin Caps, the Mad Ants just won a championship, and the Fort Wayne Comets have all had great success in the past five years. Olympians, do you think, come from Fort Wayne? Oh my gosh. At least four that I know of. I mean, we've had, I, I believe it's 18 Olympians. I mean, name any other city in the country that's had 18 Olympians from this size. Look at all the major leaguers we've had. Look at all the NFL players we've had. We've got three or four guys who've won Super Bowls. I mean, that's impossible from a city our size. All of this has just been almost overlooked, I think would be a better word than forgotten. Because there hasn't been a single repository for it, um, it's not something that you teach in schools. It's something that, frankly, no one else is reporting on or telling the stories about. Probably not enough information is put forth on a regular basis to remind the citizens. People didn't even know the NBA was formed in Fort Wayne 
until about seven, eight years ago when Carl Bennett started the push to get Fort Wayne recognized by the Basketball Hall of Fame as the birthplace of the NBA. You know, it's just so many things that are just fall between the cracks. We don't have that tradition that's been passed on. It's, it's kind of just the minor league tradition. I think if we had some of those major sports teams now, it would help us remember what happened in the past. There was something going on almost every year throughout the 1950s that affected sports on a national scale. And then Fort Wayne was too small and we couldn't hold on to them all. And these things kind of all peeled off and the Daisies went out of business in 54. The Pistons moved in 57. The Fort Wayne Open died in 1956. We took a swing at the best of the best and they didn't always work. I'm thinking if I think of a sports town in Indiana, I'd probably think of Indianapolis, uh, just because it's the biggest city. It might be part of our emphasis as the second city of Indiana. We seem to have an inferiority complex in a lot of ways to Indianapolis, plus being in the middle of Chicago and Detroit and Cincinnati and Cleveland, and you know, you could say Grand Rapids now or Toledo a little bit. You know, I mean, some of the bigger cities, Columbus, Ohio. We're always in the middle but we're not the focus. The Comets do a great job every year with the old timers or the legends now they want to be called. They're always having alumni games. They're always celebrating anniversaries. These are small market minor league teams with small staffs and they're trying to do the best they can. The Tin Caps do a great job posting banners and things of, of things that have happened in Fort Wayne sports history. It's, it's everybody looking at their own little part. We need to find a way to put them all together in one area. I'm a Reds fan. You know, they got a Hall of Fame right there at the ballpark. If you did something like that where people are, and they just could mosey in, not really realize what they're in, and the next thing you realize, wow, look at all this stuff. I think we do need a Fort Wayne Sports Hall of Fame at some time, but that's gonna take a tremendous amount of money. It's gonna take millions of dollars to do it, and to do it correctly, because, you know, if you do it halfway, it's gonna look at, and it's going to quickly be forgotten again. Grand Rapids has the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame where they, they put uh, busts on plaques and they have them on the wall so people can see them as they walk around the arena and things like that. I mean, we need, we need something to accumulate some of this memorabilia that it, that's, that's out there because all, when all these people are passing away, the memorabilia is just disappearing. Fort Wayne Sports Hall of Fame sounds like a fantastic idea to me. And I would visit it. You think it would be supported? I would, you would go it, just I, once, you'd go multiple times? Oh, and I would bring out a town guest to see it. So, it sounds like a great idea. I'm behind it and I would support it and hopefully the city would support something like that. Part of the reason I wanted to do the Fort Wayne Sports History Book is because I felt so much of this was being lost and there wasn't one place to go and look up information about these things. And now there is. We can use that book for this. It's not a a thing of, I did this, it's like, no, Fort Wayne did this. I mean, there's so many amazing things. All I did was put them together. I wasn't Jesse Owens racing a horse. I wasn't Jim Thorpe playing baseball here or Christian Matthewson pitching. Those people did that. I just kind of put it all together in one spot and maybe that can provide a basis for people. Now maybe we can start using this in our collective memory and in our, our collective pride about the city. One thing the sports in our town do a great job of is the naming. You have the Mad Ants, which you know make us remember Mad Anthony, and then you have the Tin Caps, and everyone thinks of Johnny Appleseed. I think our sports are helping us remember what's happened and what's been important to our city, but now our city and the people need to help us remember what's important in our sports and our athletics. And I think the next step, like Blake Sebring did a great job with his book, which is actually a stepping stone. I think to what we need next is a Hall of Fame in Fort Wayne for, for young people who haven't experienced those things in the past to go in and, and see them firsthand and to see pictures and, and, and read documents about the important parts of our sports history and I think that would help it stick in their mind more and then that's something that they can kind of visualize and, and remember about Fort Wayne sports.